guess we'll do the video on another time. We've got to have the sound for it. But, uh, but anyway, well, we're going to sing another song. Uh, I, I hate it. That was, uh, that was one of my favorite videos that we've done, and, and I was anxious to show it to you. So, uh, so anyway, we'll try it again on another day. But uh, uh, we have an extra special song that you're familiar with that we're going to sing today. So I'm going to invite you to stand one more time, and we'll sing it.
Oh, so technology is a wonderful thing, and then other times, you know, you just kind of go with it. So thank you all for singing loud so that we can all be loud. So we'll see if this song works, but you know, we live our lives and, and we have a, you're going along and it's kind of a peaceful day. It seems like everything's going pretty good. You don't have any problems or whatever. And it seems like out of nowhere, a storm comes and just sets you back. And, and it, it's in those moments that if you know the peace speaker, if you know Jesus and you can feel his calm, then, then that's who you can count on. So I just pray this morning that if you're in a storm, that you pray and that you just lean on the peacekeeper. If you're in a good place, pray and lean on the peace speaker and, and just keep your life always ready. So let's see if this works.
uh, it's time to go to, to uh, Kids Club. So if you're a part of that, you guys go have a great time. And uh, we'll see you in a while. I know a lot of you are concerned right now. You watch the news, or if you uh, do uh, often like Kathy does, and, uh, and uh, at night, whenever we get ready to go to bed, she pulls up uh, 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 all of the latest news on her iPad, and she uh, checks in on how things are going in uh, the Ukraine. And of course, uh, we talk about it a little bit each evening. And uh, it's been a long, long time since uh, the threat of war that could become worldwide has been on our doorstep, hasn't it? So there is a lot to occupy our minds right now, a lot of concerns, a lot of worries, a lot of struggles, and, and that only adds to the things that are right in front of us that we see. You know, continuing health issues. Uh, and, and for many of us right now, whenever the gas prices get over $4, that gets to be concerning. We know that food prices are following closely behind. And, and, and we just wonder, where are things going to be? And, and what are we going to do about all of this? And, and, and how can we deal with all of these problems and issues. Well, today I'm going to be talking to you about seven blessings that are listed in Romans chapter 5. Seven blessings of God's faith in our lives. You know, our God is a just God, and in Webster's New Collegiate Dictionary, the word just is defined as being fair or upright, you know, above board, reasonable and faithful to the original, proper, conforming to a standard of correctness. Well, since God himself set the standard of correctness, he conforms to it, doesn't he? So, whenever we think about that word just, we think of the word correct, righteous, merited, deserved. We think of all of those things whenever that word is used in connection with our God. So, this means that our God is still the standard. It means that our God is still the truth. It means that our God is still correct and he must stay true to his word, and he must stay true to his promises. God has determined that sin still must be punished. Yeah, I, I think our culture today forgets that. It's actually being taught today, even in some churches, that that sin really isn't punished anymore. But God has determined that sin must be punished and our God will remain faithful to his word. Now, God remaining faithful to his word is good news for us today because he has made promises to those who believe. But let's look at our lives just for a second. On the other hand, we are not just. Matter of fact, we try to justify our actions in some way or another. And as human beings, we want to be accepted by other people. We want to feel as if how we're living and what we're doing is okay. But throughout our lifetime, we have not always been perfectly upright. We've not always been just before God. You know, we have failed in measuring up to his standard of correctness. Don't you agree? We've actually been sharing scriptures with you lately that all of us have sinned. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. And so we have fallen short, but God must still stay true to his word. I am very, very 
very grateful for a verse of scripture that will be in our text today. In Romans chapter 5, verse 8, it says there that God has demonstrated his love for us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. God has demonstrated that love for us even though we couldn't justify our actions before him. In Hebrews chapter 9, verses 9, uh, 27 and 28, the scripture teaches us just as man is destined to die once and after that to face judgment, so Christ was sacrificed once to take away the sins of many people. And he will appear a second time not to bear sin, but to bring salvation for those who are waiting for him. Now, this is teaching us that uh, even though you may have accepted Christ years ago, like in my life I accepted Jesus when I was seven years old. And you may look all the way back there to the day that you found salvation, but our salvation will not be realized until the end of our life when Jesus comes for us either through death or whenever he returns in his glory. But we are all because of sin. The Bible says we have to die once. We have to face the judgment. But praise God, our Lord Jesus was sacrificed once. His sacrificial death on the cross for our sins was a once and for all event. It was all that was needed. We cannot justify our sins. We cannot justify the actions of our past. But God did. God loved you and God loved me so much he wanted to apply justification to your lives, not as a way of you being able to explain away your actions, but you being able to give praise to the one who took away your sins. We owe a debt that we're unable to pay. But Jesus paid the price for our sins whenever he gave his life up for us. And so now we're justified. It's as if the debt has been settled. It's as if we never had the debt in the first place. I told you a story several months ago uh, uh, about uh, Kathy paying bills years whenever our kid, years ago when our kids were, li were little. And it was actually a furniture payment. And the payment was exactly $100 a month. And that was uh, years ago when $100 was quite a bit of money. But it was $100 a month. And one of our kids decided to help Mama pay bills. So she went to get a stamp to put on the envelope. She had already slipped her check in the envelope. And we get, uh, 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 and, and one of the kids put some Monopoly money in with the check. And a month later, we get our Monopoly money returned with this note. And it said, Dear Mr. and Mrs. Trotter, we thank you so much for your faithfulness and your promptness in being willing to pay your bill. However, it is our practice that we cannot accept money made by the Milton Bradley Company. Now, What's extra funny about that story is the way the bill was set up. We owed $800 on the bill. Kathy put a $100 check in there, and one of the kids had gotten a $500 Monopoly bill and two $100 Monopoly dollars. It would have paid off the bill to the penny if they could have taken money from the Milton Bradley Company. But just as if they could only take U.S. government official dollars, you know, our Lord, whenever it comes to uh, uh, redeeming us from our sins, it only required the precious blood of Jesus. Nothing else would do. It was only the blood of Jesus that would work in our lives. So now that our salvation has been paid for, 
Now that our sins have been paid for because of Christ, we have this new outlook on life. And Paul describes that in our scripture today in Romans 5. We are justified through faith, and faith is the action that's required on your part. God did the rest by sending His Son. So He is requiring faith on your part. The Bible teaches us that we were justified at the perfect time. Just at the right time. So in other words, we're on God's timetable. God has everything so much within His control that we are on His timetable and God has taken action on our behalf. In Galatians chapter 4, verses 4 and 5, it says there, when the fullness of time had come, God sent His Son to redeem those who were under the law. Now, the word under the law, it means those who were guilty of having broken the law so that we could receive adoption as children. We are justified by His blood. And I shared with you in last Sunday's sermon, uh, as we were getting ready to receive communion, I shared with you uh, 1 John chapter 1, verse 7, where it teaches us that the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from every sin. Not just some of your sins, not just one or two of your sins, but every sin. Let's look at the first few verses of Romans 5 as Paul begins listing the blessings that come from being justified by faith. Let's look at the first three verses. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, uh, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also rejoice in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Let's, let's read on verses 4 and 5. Perseverance produces character and character hope. And hope does not disappoint us because God has poured out His love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit whom He has given us. Now notice verse 1 again. Therefore, we have been justified by faith through Jesus Christ. And because of that, we have peace with God. So blessing number one, you can have peace with God today. You can be at peace with God. There are too many people today who go through the motions of salvation, but yet they do not live in peace. It's as though that they have followed the requirements in hopes that they'll get to heaven, kind of a turn or burn mentality. But then they're miserable. They don't live in peace. Ladies and gentlemen, if Jesus Christ has saved you from your sins and you do not live in peace, there is a trust issue on your part. There is a trust issue to where you do not trust God enough. I read a story about a man who was walking along a steep cliff. He accidentally got too close to the cliff and he fell. And all the way down, he grabbed a branch. He was hanging on for dear life. He began yelling, hoping that someone would hear him. And finally, he heard a voice. Yes, I can hear you. Are you all right? Yes, the man said. Who are you and, and, and where are you? It's the Lord. You mean you're God? Yes, I am. God, please help me. If you get me down from here, I'll stop sinning. I'll do anything. I'll serve you for the rest of your life, for the rest of my life. So God speaks and he says, okay, just let go of the branch. Just trust me, just let go. And the man goes, help, help, is anybody else up there? I think that that's the way that, that we view our relationship with God too often. Whenever we don't get the answer we're looking for, 
we're quick to say, is there anyone else that can help me? God certainly hasn't. You see, any way you look at it, salvation and justification, those are a matter of faith. Your faith. Not God's faith. God has already demonstrated His love to us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. God created us. And because He had the power to create us, He has the power to sustain us. He can take care of us. So we have to trust God today. And by trusting God, we can have peace. That leads us to blessing number two. The Bible teaches us in verse number two that we have gained access because of our God. Through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace where we now stand. Now I want to remind you that uh, to give us a demonstration of that access, whenever Jesus was hanging on the cross, on the moment that he died, there was something that happened in the temple that, uh, uh, that notified us of that access to God. Do you remember what it was? The curtain, the veil in the, uh, in, in the temple was torn in two. And it was the curtain to the Holy of Holies. And only the high priest could go into the Holy of Holies once a year on the Day of Atonement. And whenever that curtain was torn in two, it was uh, demonstrating to us that we have access to God any day, any hour, any minute, any time, no matter what. And I'm grateful for that, aren't you? So we have gained access to God. How do we get there? Through faith. Faith into this grace in which we are now, now standing. This verse also reminds me of two key thoughts of our Christian doctrine. In Isaiah 59 and 2, the Bible says there that it was our sins that separated us between us and our God so that He would not hear us. And then in Psalm 66, uh, verse 18, the Bible says, If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Now, I really, really like to talk about uh, Psalm 66, 18. I like to mention that for a moment. In the King James Version, it says, if I regard iniquity in my heart. So in other words, if there is this minute little sin that I have kept between me and God, I've kept it for myself, I've given everything else to God, but I've held this one thing back. If I regard this one thing over God, the Bible says, the Lord will not hear my prayers. So again, how deep is your trust level? How much do you trust God? Under the Old Testament or under the Old Covenant, God wanted His people to understand the seriousness of their sins. Their sins under the Old Covenant would separate them to the point that only the high priest could talk to God on their behalf, and he would do that on the Day of Atonement. The high priest would enter into the temple, go into the Holy of Holies, he would offer a sacrifice there, he would intercede to God on behalf of sinful people who wanted reconciliation with God. But when Jesus came, he was a fulfillment to a promise. He brought a new covenant... And that provided direct access to God through faith. We don't have to go through the high priest anymore. We go directly to our God. So we have peace with God. That's blessing number one. We have access to God through Jesus. That's blessing number two. And, blessed number, uh, and blessing number three is we now have a glorious hope. In the latter portion of verse number 2, it says, Through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand, and because of this, and we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. We have something to be excited about. We have hope. We have hope. You know, I can remember years and years ago, uh, as uh, Kathy and I, we only had a short four-month engagement, but 
I can remember as I was waiting for those 120 days to pass, it just seemed like with me being in Indiana and her being in Arkansas, that time went by slow. It went by so slowly. But every step I got a little bit closer. And whenever the 30 days, uh, whenever the 120 days became 90 days, and then 60 <coughs> days, and then 30 days, my hope would build. And, and whenever I went down and we went through the process of the rehearsal on the night before, I, I'm thinking, this is really going to happen. It's really going to happen. Folks, the closer we get in our relationship with God, the certain. The, the certainty that we need to have comes forefront. We are certain this is going to happen. We are certain that God has sent His Son for us, and we are certain that Jesus saved us. We are certain. In 1 John 5, verse 13, uh, uh, John writes, These things have I written unto you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you might know, so that you can be certain that you have eternal life. Blessing number four. Christian character. The scripture says in verses three and four, not only so, but we rejoice in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character, and character, hope. Now notice that. Suffering produces perseverance. Now, we have a whole lot of impatient people in our generation today, don't we? You want to know why people are so impatient? They haven't learned how to persevere. They haven't learned that there is more than one way. If we're going to have to suffer, there are better ways to suffer. Let me explain what I mean. Peter in the book of 1 Peter, goes to great lengths to talk about suffering. And I think it is 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 19, that he indicates to us that if we are going to suffer in life anyway, learn to suffer according to the glory of God. So learn to understand that you have something beyond this life and live like you do. Learn to suffer according to the will of God. And when you learn to suffer according to the will of God, you begin building perseverance and patience. You begin understanding God's plan in life. You begin sensing His presence. And then all of a sudden we realize we realize that our faith has gained us access to a place we've never been before. Our faith has gained us access into the very presence of God. You know, I was describing in a lesson recently, I, I, I was teaching a class to some of our young folks, and, and I was describing a few times in my life that God spoke to me in such a way that it was undeniable. That, that it couldn't be questioned. That sometimes God would place words in my heart or in my mind that someone would one day tell me. And they would tell me those words verbatim. And, and, and how that would ever happen, it would not have happened had I not spent some moments in the very presence of God. You know, God doesn't get into the detail until we're willing to stay in His presence. God doesn't get into the specifics until we're willing to stay in His presence. God doesn't help us to love the unlovable until we spend some time staying in His presence. It's as simple as that. And whenever we stay in the presence of God, He builds our perseverance. And whenever He builds our perseverance, we trust even more in His promises. We hope in the glory that's been prepared for us beyond this life. And that enables us to endure what we're going through right now. And this type of perseverance, it builds a new character in you. 
a godly character, a character of love and grace, a character of hope. And, and we need more people around here that continually testify in the hope that we have in Christ Jesus. I've had the privilege of babysitting my grandson Elias on several occasions. And it wasn't that long ago that he couldn't say my name. But before he could even say my name, he knew my name. Before he could even pronounce my name, he knew my name. And, and then there was a time whenever I would walk into a room, he couldn't say it, but he could mouth it. He would go through the motions of saying my name, but he couldn't say it out loud. And my heart would just ache. I wanted him to yell out my name. But now when I come in the room, I tell you what, he sees me and he yells out my name. And if I do not acknowledge him, he yells it out again and yells it out again and yells it out again. I love to hear him call out my name. There are a lot of people in the church and in our community today who are mouthing the word of God. But they're not calling God's name out loud in faith. Does that make sense? They're not calling His name out loud in faith. And it is God's desire that you demonstrate your faith by calling out His name. Calling it out, out loud where everyone can hear it. Then, hope would become contagious around this place. Blessing number five. That's simply God's love within. Let's look at verses 5 and go down to, I, I'm sorry, verses 6 through 8. It says, you see at just the right time when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Rarely, very rarely, will anyone die for a righteous man, though for a good man someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Now, notice this. Our hope doesn't disappoint us. God has demonstrated His love within. Whenever we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, He gives us of His Spirit. His Holy Spirit indwells with us. And the Bible teaches us that that Holy Spirit guides us into all truth. We begin understanding what the truth really is whenever we are walking in the Spirit, whenever we are living in the presence of God. So blessing number five is God's love within. Blessing number six is we receive salvation from future wrath. Look at verse nine. Since we have now been justified by His blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him. For if, when we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son, how much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? Now, I've got to share with you, I'm one of those glass half full kind of people. And, and, and so, over my life, for the most part, I've been a pretty optimistic kind of guy. Now, there's one problem to this. People have even told me that whenever I preach, I preach messages of hope. And I hope that at the end of the day, it's my desire at the end of the day, that I am known as a man who preaches the hope of God. But one of the things I don't want to shortchange is this. Scripture says in here that since we've been justified by His blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath? I preach a lot about the heaven that we have to gain. But I want you to understand, there is a literal hell to avoid. There is a literal hell to shun. 
And there are multitudes of people who are ignoring God. And according to what the Bible says, there are people that are heading to a devil's hell without salvation. And we need to also remember that even though Jesus, whenever he was on the earth, he came here to share his hope with us. Jesus preached more about hell than he did about heaven. Did you know that? In the New Testament, Jesus mentioned hell more than he mentioned heaven. Why? Because all of us assume that there is a better place beyond this one. But most of us forget that there is a place of judgment if we do not do things God's way. So blessing number six is that we can receive salvation from future wrath. And then finally, number seven, we can have reconciliation with God. In verse 11, it says, not only is this so, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received <coughs> reconciliation. Reconciliation, it means your debts are paid. Reconciliation, it means that the books are clear. Reconciliation means the account was settled. Reconciliation means a friend that you once hurt, you have now set the record straight and you are friends again. Reconciliation means we are joined back together with God. So we've been given at least seven blessings in these short 11 verses today. Seven blessings from God, but all of them have one key element. Faith. Do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Savior of the world? And have you accepted Him as your Savior today? Would you pray? Father God, I come to you right now asking your blessing on these words that I've shared today. Dear Father, if there's someone here today who is not a Christian who needs to accept you by faith, we pray that you would give them the courage to come forward and receive you as their Lord and Savior. Touch our lives, we pray right now. Convict us where we need convicting. Strengthen us where we need strengthening. And help us all to express our faith in you. In Christ Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Would you stand together for our closing song today? Is Jesus your friend? If you need to accept him today, the altar is open. Would you come?
invite you to go with us if you'd like. And I'd uh, love to have your company. If you're going on to another place for lunch, we understand that as well, too. Just uh, 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 take into consideration of remembering our, our youth. This is an outing where we're trying to reach out and touch the lives of, of more youth. We're kind of anticipating uh, several more to even show up uh, at the bowling alley. And so, or at least we hope so. And, uh, and anyway, we're just trying to, to do something to reach out and touch a few more people. So remember the needs that are, that are around us right now. Let's pray together. Father God, bless us now, we pray. Thank you for your word. And dear God, I pray that you will speak to our hearts. And dear God, I pray that you will be with our church. Help us to be the congregation you would have us to be. And help us to win multitudes of people for you. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. God bless you.